In this video, we're going to be showing you how to remove and install your fuel nozzles in your 3406B or C Caterpillar engine. So a customer brought this 3406B in. It was a 3ZJ serial number. And the first thing you're gonna have to do is remove your valve covers. Now, if you're only changing one nozzle, you only have to remove the valve cover over the corresponding cylinder. So once they are off, you will have your Jake's housings, if you have Jake's. Now, this is the fuel line you're gonna to need to remove, so the Jake housings do need to come off. If you don't have Jake's, don't have to worry about this step. So the Jake's are retained by these large nuts. There's two of them, and there's two of these smaller bolts. Those are the two bolts, there's the other nut. So once they're removed, you have much better access to your fuel line. Now the fuel line over there runs to an adapter through the head, and it makes it really hard to get to it if you don't have your valve cover and your valve cover base off. So valve cover bases are off now. You can see the nozzle nut and the fuel line and a better view of it going to the adapter through the head. Now you're gonna need some tooling to do this. You're gonna need a slide hammer. The black socket in the middle is a cat tool. The tool to the right is for removing the retainer. And then the tool to the left of the socket is an adapter from the slide hammer to the nozzle. So first step is going to be removing your fuel line. Now these are reusable fuel lines. There's an O-ring on one side that you'll want to replace. And then on the other side, it's just a compression fit. So you'll need a 7 eighths wrench. And you don't have to do anything with the fuel lines from the pump. You just need to remove this little jumper line. So loosen that nut there. And once that's loosened, you will be able to loosen the inner nut that goes directly to the nozzle. Now that's where that big socket, the uh, specialty tool that I was showing you, comes in handy. You could use a wrench or a flare nut, but the proper tool is this humongous socket that Cat sells. So you're gonna wanna get, and it's half inch drive, so I need a half inch ratchet. So this is the socket I was talking about. Five Paul 0144 is the cat part number for this socket. So this is what you're gonna use to loosen and tighten this nut. And it's, even though this is the right tool for this, it's kind of a tight fit and it's kind of a pain to get it in uh, around the bridges, the bridges are kind of wide on these B models, so you're going to have to loosen it, and once it's loosened up a little bit, usually about half a turn, you'll be able to just take it out by hand. Like I said, you could try to use a, uh, a crow's foot or a wrench as well, I'm sure lots of people have done that. So, loosen it up, once it's about half a turn loose, it's easy to take off, typically with your fingers. So once this fuel line is off, you're gonna inspect it for damage or weird bends or anything. And then it's on to removing our nozzle retainer. Now the retainer is very important and it keeps the nozzle in the head because the nozzle would just get shot out of the head if you were not using a retainer due to the compression. So this tool is basically a 916 drive uh, bolt head with two little pins. And you can see the pin holes in the retainer here there's one of them, and there's two, obviously. Now, that little tool goes in those bores. So, part number 1342570, that's the CAD part number. So, once it's in there, which basically it just sits there, you're going to want to get your ratchet or a wrench, and you're going to want to put some downward pressure while loosening or tightening this because it tends to want to jump out because those pins are actually pretty shallow. So it's normal, you know, counterclockwise rotation to loosen it. And once it's, once you've broken the fastening torque off of it, it will, uh, it'll just spin out of there. So remove your little tool and then you're gonna remove your retainer and you're gonna inspect that for damage. Uh, it's probably gonna be full of oil, so you're gonna need to clean it out. That's your retainer, full of oil as usual. And once that is out, you are ready to remove your fuel nozzle. So I'll show you a little close up here what we're looking at. So you can see your fuel nozzle there, it's in the uh, nozzle bore and the threads that the fuel line went into, that's where you're gonna put your adapter and your slide ha hammer in. 
So get your slide hammer and your adapter on the end. Uh, Cat makes an adapter, but if you have an old fuel line or you could even use a fuel line and try to use a pry bar, but uh, depending on how long those nozzles have been in there, they can be really hard to get out. Uh, this is a pretty big slide hammer and it, it takes quite a bit of effort to pop it out, mostly due to the carbon buildup on the bottom of the nozzle around your carbon dam. And there's gonna be oil all over this thing because it's not a oil tight fit. There's no seal that keeps the uh, nozzle from the oil in the engine. Now there will be a little washer under your nozzle. You wanna make sure that if you're gonna reuse these or whatever, you don't wanna lose that. It should stay between the carbon dam and the base of the nozzle. So this is our nozzle, our old one. We're getting all reman ones. So uh, you're gonna remove this and your nozzle is now out. The carbon dam is that white uh, seal at the end of the nozzle, by the way. So getting on to cleaning your bore. So showing you a close up here of our nozzle bore, you can see it's full of oil and carbon. Best way to clean it out is just spray a little brake clean in there. You don't want to fill up the cylinder with brake clean. You just want enough to wash the little bit of oil and carbon into the cylinder. You don't really have to evac these cylinders after you do this. This isn't like a Huey engine where it dumps, you know, a quart of fuel into the cylinder. There'll be very little oil and brake clean that'll make it into that cylinder. So you can see it's much cleaner now and our washer wasn't stuck in there or anything it was on the nozzle so we have a new nozzle here now you can see this little screw that sits to the side you want to make sure this goes in the rounded end of the retainer not the flats you see the flats there's two of them make sure that screw head does not go where the flats are because it can bend the side of the nozzle so it doesn't really matter which way it goes um, as far as which rounded section just don't put it where the flats are now this carbon dam here should come on your nozzles. I like to put a little oil on them because they're gonna be pushed in that bore. Uh, so once that's in there, now you wanna make sure your nozzle has a washer. You're gonna see it fall here, but it stays above the carbon dam. That's fine, it'll get pushed up as we push the nozzle in. So the nozzles getting them out are very hard, obviously. We had to use a slide hammer, but they should press in. So you should be able to just press it in by hand. You don't wanna hit these with a hammer or step on them or anything. It should slide in with a little bit of effort. So once it's in there and it's kind of bottomed out, you don't need a specialty tool to seat it or anything. That's how it sits. Now, next step is going to be, you're gonna to wanna to remove your little plastic cap. So we're gonna remove our plastic cap. And the next step is gonna be installing the retainer. Now the retainer has a torque spec for it, and I can clean it. I have cleaned it as you can see. There's no seal or anything for the retainer. I put a little oil on the threads just so nothing galls up and you get a good torque reading. And then you're just gonna install it hand tight for now. And then you're gonna torque it with the, uh, the special cat tool for these retainers. So I just put it on, finger tight. It should thread on. You shouldn't have to use the tool to run it on. If not, you probably have damaged threads or something. So that's on, now we're gonna get our tool again and we're gonna torque this to 35 foot-pounds. So there's your retainer installation tool and then you're gonna get your torque wrench. Kind of hard to see here, but I set it to 35 foot-pounds. And then we're just gonna use a deep 916 socket and we're gonna torque it. Now probably lots of guys have not torqued these, but I typically like to torque anything on the engine. Now remember what I said before, you wanna put downward pressure because that uh, install tool tends to jump out. So that's torqued. Now the next step is I just like to put a torque stripe down the retainer to the body and that's just showing that I torque them. So the retainer's now on, the nozzle's now in. The next step is to install your fuel line. Like I said, it's reusable unless of course it's damaged or got bent or something. And there's an O-ring on the one side. I've put a little oil on it already. And you're gonna wanna push the O-ring section into the adapter that goes through the head first. And once you push it through, I like to just run the nut on the adapter all the way down, hand tight. 
and then we're going to run our nozzle nut down hand tight. You can see the adapter and the nut much better here. So just run it down hand tight, and then we're going to tighten that after. So next step is to run this nut in hand tight, and then we're going to torque it with that super long specialty cat socket. So that's in there. Let's get our super fancy socket here. And now this torques to 30 foot-pounds. And it can be a pain because it's hard to get to. And like I said, the bridges can get in the way. Now I'm sure lots of guys, like I said, have used wrenches or flare nut wrenches, whatever. But there is a proper torque for this, like I said, 30 foot-pounds. So once it's torqued, it is ready to go for your fuel line. You just have to tighten the other side. Now the other side, we're just going to be using our 7 8 wrench and tightening it. Uh, you can't put really a torque wrench on it because you have to use an open-ended wrench to tighten it. But tighten it till it's tight. Um, once that's tight, your fuel line's on. And now it's ready to install your jake housing and then your valve cover bases and your valve cover. So your jake housings here, they're not reversible. There's a rear and there is a front. Now, the rear one has a casting, and it says rear, and the front one has a casting, and it says front. Do not mix them up, they won't work. Now, the nuts torque to 100 foot-pounds, and make sure the washers you took off and the washers under the Jake housings remain in place, they're very important. And then these smaller bolts, they torque to 50 foot-pounds, or Cat actually says 48, but plus or minus a couple. So torque them to 50 and put your valve covers on and you are done. Thanks for watching the video. Now, I'm sure you enjoyed watching this video, but I know the real reason you watch these videos and it's for a little segment that I like to call So a customer brought in his truck and said he wanted a blow-by test to see if it was a little high. This truck is idling. If your blow-by blow -by looks like this idling, you don't need a blow-by test, you need a new engine. Thanks for watching.